Welcome to Raleigh, North Carolina for a 1995 interstate matchup between the NC State Wolfpack and the UNC Tar Heels. With bowl implications on the line, let's head to the sidelines for the opening kickoff here on ESPN Classic. North Carolina won the toss. They, however, decided to defer to the second half, and so NC State will receive it, and Scott Caparelli will kick it off for North Carolina. And a couple of speedsters, Alvis of speedsters, Alvis Quidditt, number 80 on the left, and Torrey Holt, number 81 on the right, back for the Wolfpack. The wind should not be a major factor. It's kind of swirling a little bit if you go by the flags at the top of the stadium. But it doesn't appear to be that strong that it's going to have a great effect on the kicking game, at least at this point. Caparelli does not have a real strong leg. We thought we might see Chris Welch kicking. And so Witted and Holder up at about the five, and Witted's going to take it at about the nine. Out to about the 32 before he's brought down. Jamie Garrick, number 49 on the tackle, along with Jomo Leggins, 21. And North Carolina State will have pretty good field position to start the ball game. Terry Harvey, number 14, doing the quarterbacking as always. He's completed 58% of his passes this year. A senior, 6'1 and 190. Terry's had a pretty good senior year. You see the numbers on him in his last four games. And he's the kind of guy that's a leader out there and does a lot of good things, makes good decisions for this North Carolina State offense. Rod Brown, the lone setback, and Harvey to throw on first down. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Coming quickly was Eric Thomas, the safety, to knock it down. It'll be second and ten. And here are the Chili's starting lineups, the backs and receivers first for North Carolina State. Well, you can find that uh, Tremaine Stevens, their tailback, is going to get the ball quite a bit today. He's a pretty good player. As a freshman, he had over 1,000 yards rushing this year. He's had a little over 700. But uh, he's an excellent player. And as you saw there, they threw the ball to Mike Guffey, their leading receiver. Expect him to get some balls as well. On second down, Rod Brown from the one back set out to about the 38 for a gain of close to five or six. James Hamilton, number 54, making the tackle at linebacker. Take a look at this offensive line for North Carolina State. Steve Kime is a quality, quality offensive guard. He has NFL potential. Possibly he'll be playing center in the NFL. Uh, he's their best offensive lineman. The Redmond brothers, the two guys that are center and guard, we'll talk about them today. They're a quality pair themselves. Third down about four. Now Tremaine Stevens in a tailback behind Brown. And the option to Stevens. He has the first down as he's across the 45 to the 47. Again, James Hamilton, 54 on the stop. You're going to see Tremaine Stevens run the ball today. He's going to go up against his North Carolina defense. It is very good themselves. We talked about Jones in the, in the open, but Kibasano Mays is the leading tackler in the ACC. Number 53, you see him there. He makes a lot of plays for this North Carolina defense, and he runs at front seven. Tremaine Stevens gained nine. First down, Wolfpack at their own 47. Brown. Big hole. And another first down into North Carolina territory near the 42 before Sean Boyd, number 28, the free safety, came up to meet him. Well, the North Carolina State offensive line is coming off the ball at this North Carolina defense. And that's what they're going to need to do is move it out down the field. And I tell you, Terry Harvey likes to throw the ball down the field as well. And the secondary he's going against is led by Terrence Billups, the cornerback. He's probably their best cover cornerback. And Fuzzy Lee does a really nice job on the other side as well. So it's going to be a pretty good contest with these two teams. They match up very well. And if they can keep moving the ball on the, field, on the field like this, that's what North Carolina State needs to do. That was a gain of 11, and now they go back to the one-back set with three wideouts in the game. Harvey has time, locks it down the middle for Jimmy Grissom, but it's too long. Pretty good coverage. Eric Thomas was back there, number 38. But the ball just overthrown. Well, there was contact down the field. Grissom is complaining to the official going down there about 15 yards down the field. The defender really did bump into him, and he was saying that he was impeded on the play, and I, I know that Terry Harvey thought so as well. He laid it out there, and the only one who's going to catch that ball would have been Grissett.
Second and ten. Tremaine Stevens back in at tailback. Play action. Harvey has time. Incomplete intended for Mike Guppy. But a little bit wide. Terry Billups, number 25, was covering it. Guppy, of course, the leading receiver. Well, Guffey made a play there. North Carolina State, as I mentioned, they need to control the ball on offense, move it down the field. I think if they get 23 or more first downs, they're going to control what they need to do. And on defense, it's no secret. They've got to stop the run. They've got to force North Carolina to be a one-dimensional team and throw the ball. That's how they'll be successful. And North Carolina, they've got to do a good job on their, on their side of the ball as well, moving the ball down the field. Third and ten from the shotgun. Incomplete intended for Guffey and Fuzzy Lee was right there. May have even gotten a hand on it. But knock it away from Mike Guffey. And NC State will have to punt on fourth and ten. A little uncharacteristic of Guffey dropping two balls and the first two balls that are thrown to him today. But give credit North Carolina's defense. They've done a nice job. So Jay Dukes will come on to punt. He's averaging right at 40 yards a kick. Dropping back will be Marcus Wall, number 14 for North Carolina. And he's done a great job returning punts. Second in the ACC. Good high hanger. And a good job by Marcus Wall to stay with it. He makes the fair catch at about the 11. A 31 yard punt. First and 10 Hills. But North Carolina will have to start with less than the best field position. We've got 12.55 to go in the first quarter, and the Tar Heels will have their first shot on offense. Mike Thomas at quarterback now in his senior year you see his completion percentage 56 but he's thrown for over 2200 yards well, 2200 yards but look there at the bottom 18 interceptions that's what has plagued this North Carolina offense and Mike Thomas all year he's got an excellent strong arm and it gets him in trouble sometimes Linton in a tailback and he doesn't get very far a few out across the 15 Dewan Everett number 16 at linebacker making the stop as Jonathan Linton is in there at 250 pound tailback we talked about Leon Johnson, the open. Linton is the other tailback that will get in there for him. Leon's kind of nursing a sprained ankle. It's kind of questionable whether he would play as much. These receivers, Octavius Barnes and the Chris Watson, and the fullback Chris Watson, they do a pretty good job in this Carolina offense. Linton again. Cuts it up hard and gets about to the 21. Brandon Davis and James Walker made the stop. Yeah, that's why this North Carolina offense is running so well. This offensive line does a good job, Steve. Jeff Saturday, the center, is a senior. And he's a quality, quality player. For them. He anchors the whole offensive line there. The two tackles have really played real well. Byron Thomas and Russell Babb, they've, they've done a pretty good job of protecting Mike Thomas. They're, uh, they're a quality group, and they're getting better. The last couple of weeks, they have improved and improved. That's what uh, Matt Brown told me. This offensive line has really improved, especially over the last couple of weeks. Maurice McGregor in now at the running back as well on third and one and Litton fell down and Mike Thomas will not get the first down. Thomas was sprinting back to hand the ball to Jonathan Litton and Litton slipped. And so Thomas had to try to make the most of it and I don't think he got the needed yard. A very unfortunate play there. Big Linton, he's in the backfield. He's a 250 pound tailback. Go up against the North Carolina State defense led by defensive tackle Harris. And he's a pretty good player himself, a senior, and he anchors that, all, that front seven up there and done a really nice job and come on for this for the defense unit for North Carolina State. Well, they gave Mike Thomas a pretty generous spot, so it's going to be really close as to whether or not it is a first down. The second it down. is. It is a first down. Well, they're going to go against this Carolina State defense, and Ricky Bell, the cornerback, is their best cover guy, Steve. He's going to be the wide side of the field the majority of the day, and he'll cover their best receiver who's out there. He does a really nice job for him. So the measurement just short of the 22, first down North Carolina. Maybe, maybe the weather has gone to the field a little bit. We saw Lent slip maybe in the middle of the field, or maybe a little bit soggy out there. Well, obviously the Bermuda grass is not that thick of a turf. Play action. Thomas gets it away, and it's incomplete, and flag goes down at the 30. The pass was intended for L.C. Stevens, and Ricky Bell, number 42, had the coverage. Well, a little play action pass that time for Thomas, a little roll to his right. Good chance for him to get out of the pocket and movement without defensive pressure in his face. Threw the ball on timing out there. 
Referee said there's going to be interference. Maybe he made contact prior to the ball getting there. You'll see here, it's just play action pass, and Thomas is going to roll behind to his right and throw the ball off to his left. Let's watch the defenders. He comes in. It looked like pretty good timing to me. Questionable call if that was an inter interference or not. Well, one thing about it, the official threw the flag immediately. There was no delay on his part, and the interference call moves the ball out to beyond the 32, where it'll be first and 10. Mike O'Kane, now in his third year, a record of 19 and 15 in NC State. Linton. To about the 37 or 38 in the grasp of Big Mike Harrison. Duan Everett also in on the play. I talked about Linton as a tailback. He's 250 pounds, and you know we expected them to move the ball down the field today quite a bit and use these guys. And with Leon Johnson out of the game, I don't know what they're going to be doing here. I expected him to get the ball 25 to 30 times, rushing and receiving. But uh, defensively, they need to pressure Terry Harvey and corral Jermaine Stevens, their, their best tailback. Linton game five. It's second and five. Chris Watson, the fullback, breaks free. First down out near midfield at about the 49. James Walker, the free safety, had to drag him down. There's another load in Watson, who's better than 240. I'll tell you, Watson does a nice job in reading the blocks here. Watch the left side of your screen. He's going to take Harrison inside. Fullback cuts back. Watson, watch him run here, get his pads down. Does a really nice job of reading the blocks of his offensive lineman, getting a nice gain on the play. Now Watson has been joined in the backfield by Leon Johnson, who's in a tailback. Number 12. On the option, Mike Thomas cuts it up, dragged out of bounds at about the 43, and a flag is down there. Watson was There's actually out of the game, the play and Jason Perry Thomas made the stop, but a flag went down as Thomas was tackled. Yards. Holding against North Carolina. Michael Dover is the referee today, our ACC crew. Holding, holding during the run. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat first down. And there's Mac Brown now in his eighth year at North Carolina. On the 47. Well, let's see here at the end of the play. The receiver gets his hands out, and that's what the problem is. He gets his hands out on the outside of the receiver, and now they're behind, and that's what they're calling as far as the holding. The defensive player is just trying to get away from him. And when you have your hands out there extended from the body, it's uh, they're going to get called. Maurice McGregor in at fullback with Leon Johnson, the tailback. And too low for Johnson as Mike Thomas threw it into the turf. And it'll bring up Thomas is second down. Intended well. for Leon Johnson. Steve, that's just like a running play for North Carolina. Leon Johnson, he's the leading receiver on the team as well with 50 receptions. And they like him to get the ball outside where he has a chance to move. He's done a nice job with that this year. Johnson, a junior. There was some speculation that he might leave school, as did Curtis Johnson after last season. But Leon has said he's coming back for his senior year. Draw play to Johnson. And he has a big hole. Inside the NC State 30, Hassan Shamsuddin, Dean, number seven, drags him down in the secondary. Well, Steve, with the numbers that the Leon Johnson has put up this year and the last couple of years, he's an excellent player, and I think that next year he's probably going to be touted as one of the Heisman candidates. Just a little draw play here inside. He gets good blocking, great vision by Leon Johnson. He's able to find the hole, move to his outside, and then just speed down the field. Does a real nice job of running that ball. A 25-yard run. First down at the Wolfpack 28. Johnson again. Not any room this time. And a good job by James Walker, the free safety to pressure from the outside. And tackle Johnson for a loss of a couple. North Carolina State's defense has to really stop Johnson and Linton when they're running the football. They have to get him in long yardage situations. I talked to the defense coordinator, uh, Ken Pettis, for uh, North Carolina State, and he told me that they need to turn, turn him into a one-dimensional team because if they can run the ball at will and throw when they want to, it's going to be a long day for that state defense. And state's defense has had a lot of problems this year, but, of course, we talked about it in the opening. What has gone before usually doesn't make a whole lot of difference in this game. Thomas running the option again. It's down to about the 27 before he's blasted by Morocco Brown, number 48. 
and Jason Perry, number nine, after, up from the secondary. Mike Thomas is a pretty good runner. He runs the option as well, and uh, he has Leon Johnson at tailback, and I'm watching Leon run, and I really don't think that his ankle is 100%. He's not leading as a, as a receiver for that option pitch very well. And, uh, Mike Thomas, I think he knows that, and he's trying to turn it up. He's come up the last couple of times. So Leon may not be their answer on the option play. I think they need to run him straight down the field, a little more straight ahead instead of laterally side to side across the field. Well, that one draw play, he ran straight ahead. He looked pretty good. That's a good point. Cutting on that ankle has got to be a problem. Now it's third down and about nine yards to go. And now Mike Thomas asks for time. Mac Brown, North Carolina's head coach. He's really... Uh, has been philosophic about this season. I think greater things were expected from both of these teams before the year began. But right now the focus is North Carolina at least has got a chance to go to a bowl game and they're in the coach or team around. Gary doesn't want that to the, end the of their season. That's right, and the players as well. I think that what North Carolina is going for is they're playing to get into a bowl game. Good chance for them to be in the Carquest Bowl or possibly the Independence Bowl, but a lot is riding on this game. As you mentioned earlier, Steve, they need to have six Division 1A wins to be qualified for a bowl game. And this would be North Carolina's sixth if they can win it. This is the 11th play of this drive. Thomas completing to Leon Johnson inside the five. Jason Perry makes the stop, but Leon and Mike Thomas hook up for a gain of 23 to make it first and goal. Well, when you got Leon Johnson coming out of the backfield as a receiver, I'm going to tell you, that's a nice thing for a quarterback to have. Watch me on the left side of your screen. He's going to get inside position on number 16, and then there's no safety help. Watch him here. He just takes the ball straight down the field, no one to help him, just man-to-man -man coverage, and that's tough for those secondary guys to come up when they're trying to get depth. Good job that time by Carolina. Of the 11 plays, that was only the second pass on the drive. Johnson again, touchdown, North Carolina. Nice drive that time by Carolina, bringing it down. I tell you, North Carolina State did not want this to happen for the first possession for Carolina to just march it straight down the field and, and score a touchdown. I tell you, a little disheartening to this defense that has not played well all year and with Leon Johnson getting on track right there. It might be a long day, a long day for this Wolfpack defense. Scott Tapparelli, who is 22 out of 23, kicking extra points this season, will attempt this one. And he drills it right through there. 7.33 to go in the first. And the Tar Heels break on top, 7-0. Steve Zabriskie, Gary Reasons, here with you in the booth. Also joined on the sidelines by Drew Smith. As North Carolina has broken on front with a 12-play, 89-yard drive. The other thing they did, Gary, is they took almost five and a half minutes off the clock. That's what you can do when you run the football and ball control, and that's kind of what these teams like to do. They both have a similar style of running attack and a play-action passing game, and right now it's in the favor of Carolina. 80 Alba Squitted, 81 Torrey Holt back for Caparelli's kick. Witted already fourth in Wolfpack history in kickoff returns, and he's only a sophomore. Another short kick. This one's taken by Jeff Butler, a backup fullback who gets it out near the 30, 28 or 29 yard line. Jamie Garrick again making the stop on special teams and Jason McGeorge, number 88, a little bit shaken up for NC State on the play, but comes off under his own power. Steve, I would expect the North Carolina State is going to get Tremaine Stevens into the game. He had the ball, the one carry in the, in the previous drive and did a nice job with it. Expect him, number 20, the tailback, to, to really get a lot of work here early on in this first quarter. And NC State going again with a one-back set, first and 10 at their own 29. Stevens got in the backfield. Guess who? Marcus Jones, number 71, breaking through to drop in for a loss. Let's get a report on the sidelines from Drew Smith. I'll tell you what, Steve, I think by the end of this football game, this turf is going to be pretty torn up. It looks like it's in pretty good shape, and it really is, except that underneath it's kind of soft out there, especially in the midfield area. It might be a factor with the Carolina running game today. Thank you, Drew. I think that slip we saw earlier may be indicative of the fact that the middle of the field is a lot different. That'll be a big factor for both these teams as much as they both like to run the football. 
Whistle stop play. No. Harvey goes ahead. Everybody had stopped. Now are they going to say it was a play or not a play? Steve, I heard a whistle early. I don't know if it was from the field, but I did hear a whistle. Well, let's let Michael Dover sort it out because, I mean, everybody stopped. Offense, defense. Then Harvey went ahead. And, of course, then the players reacted to the pass. Now, one, wait a minute. One of the officials signaled North Carolina ball because the pass was fumbled. But Dover says no. Now they're going to talk about it. <laughs> it's one of those plays that drives coaches crazy. <laughs> Michael Kane's wondering what the heck is going on. He's got a penalty, and the quarterback throws the ball. Terry Harvey's a smart, smart quarterback. Usually it's a play, uh, giveaway play for the offense. If it's a, it's offense off, off, a defense offside, maybe Carolina, he thinks he's going to throw the ball down and get a, do a, get a gimme. But it could be uh, uh, they got Carolina's defense coming back on the field, so I guess they did sort it out. Well, Mac Brown did not react too strongly when he got the explanation from Michael Dover. And now North Carolina State sideline getting the word. And hopefully Michael Dover will let us, let us in on it. <laughs> The down will be replayed. There was a whistle blown, stopped the play. We'll replay the down, second down. Well, I wonder if it was an official that blew the whistle inadvertently or if it came from somewhere else. It sounded like it came from the field. Yeah, it, I heard it very early in the play, and that's why everyone stopped. It's just a, kind of a strange thing to happen here on the field. So it's still second down and about 11. Rod Brown in there at fullback as the lone setback. And Harvey with a quick drop and a completion to Guffey. And Mike Guffey up across the 40 to the 41 in the grasp of Fuzzy Lee. It'll be a North Carolina State first down. Nice play call on that time by Ted Kane. He does a nice job of flooding the field with three receivers to the wide side of the field and has Guffey, the single receiver, with single coverage to his left. And just a quick, quick little pop out there by Terry Harvey. That's a gain of 14. First down, both back at their own 41. Rod Brown on the fake pitch straight ahead for a gain of three out to the Brian 44. Brown, the Brian Simmons, number 41 on the Brian stop. Harvey. Second and six. Tremaine Stevens, nowhere to go. First penetration came from Greg Ellis, number 87, who tripped up Tremaine Stevens behind the line of scrimmage, and then Rick Terry, number 94, finished him off. Gain of about one to the 45. I was watching Marcus Jones that time, and Steve Kime was on him, and he did a nice job of just pushing him to the outside. And if they can keep Marcus Jones out of the mix of making plays, this North Carolina State offense has a chance to succeed. Marcus, third and long, so State goes with three wideouts. Harvey again gets good protection. Almost intercepted. Kibasama Mays almost came up with the ball intended for Mike Guffey. And he'll bring up fourth down and five or six yards to go. Well, there's Steve Kahn. And take a look at these guys. Good rush inside here. You look at Jones is going to switch, going to come inside, and then Redmond pops him right in the mouth. Quarterback Harvey throws it outside. Good job there by K. Mays coming out. Almost comes out with the interception. We had a penalty on the play. Illegal procedure, illegal an illegal formation actually called against fourth North Carolina down. State. That, of course, declined by North Carolina to bring up fourth down and cause the Wolfpack to have to kick it away. 4.51 to go in the first quarter, and North Carolina on top 7 to nothing. Jay Dukes, a freshman out of Dalton, Georgia, will kick it to Marcus Wall. And under some pressure, he gets it away, and Wall comes up for a fair catch at about the... North Carolina gets the ball with pretty good field position just outside their 25. Their previous possession and scoring drive of 89 yards, their longest drive of the year. Jonathan Linton hitting the backfield just as he takes the handoff. James Walker, the free safety, who earlier came from the left, this time comes from the right to make a, ta a tackle for a loss. Ken Pettis he told me, he said, on their defense for North Carolina State, the only way they're going to be successful is they're going to have to bring seven, eight, maybe even nine guys up to the line of scrimmage to stop these guys. 
take the safety on from the outside, get back there and make a play in the backfield. That's a nice job with it. Russell Babb, offensive tackle for North Carolina, number 67, was injured on that play. He's on his knees at about the 20, being attended to by the training staff. And it appears to be a leg injury. Four and a half minutes. They have brought a stretcher out and they have pumped up an air cast which they placed on Russell Babb's ankle in an effort to stabilize it. Now they're going to bring some help to lift this big hoss up onto the cart to take him off to the training room. And uh, that's really a tough break for a senior in his last game. Obviously it is a serious injury to the point where he will not be back. Good sign, though, Steve. He's giving him a thumbs up, and he's, you know, want his teammates to continue. And he's a leader. He's a senior on this team. And I tell you, they, they really miss having him out there. Well, we also want to remind you that at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And to date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, Gary, has anything you've seen surprised you so far? State moved the ball fairly well by throwing it when they did have their first drive. But uh, the rushing game of North Carolina has been their feature. You may be able to see in your shot right there that the rain now is falling more heavily and steadily here in Raleigh. And that could have a factor on this field, a cumulative factor. It's also getting on the lens of the cameras as the game goes along. And uh, obviously, We'll have to see which team it affects more. Thomas throwing the reception, knocked up in the air and picked up by James Walker. And he is out of bounds at about the 20 or 30, rather, of North Carolina. Octavius Barnes had it and had it knocked right up in the air. And Barnes is still down on the field at about the 30. I think Jason Perry gave him a shot on that when Octavius Barnes does a nice route coming across the field. Watch him here come up and just hit and clock him. The ball comes up and the ball's up for grabs. It's a good interception there for State. That's what this game is, Steve. It's a physical game between these guys. And when a receiver comes across the middle of the field, he's fair game, and that's what they're shooting for. Take a look at here from the left side of your screen. You see Barnes is coming across right to 30. Well, we're not going to get to it, but he took a pretty good shot there. Rod Brown straight ahead, banging off one tackler and getting inside the 25 before safety Eric Thomas brings him down. Bonnie Holiday hit him, but big Rod Brown, who goes about 240 himself, bounced right off of that shot. These are the kind of things that State needs to have. Good things happen for them early, big plays, turnovers. Now they got down there and have an opportunity to put points on the board. That's what this State team needs to do. Well, getting turnovers has not been their forte. They came into this game 105th in the nation in turnover margin. Tremaine Stevens finds a hole, and he has a first down inside the 20. They're running in that area of the field, but as Drew told us, was a little bit sloppy, a little bit choppy underneath. The, the runners are not having great footing. You see Stevens, he ran through the hole there, did a nice job of finding and picking a way through there. Yeah, the range really starting to come down now, Steve. Some people hadn't recovered in the stands and didn't come that prepared. 314 to go in the first quarter. Rod Brown tripped up on a fine play by Marcus Jones. Well, Mark end up with essentially no game. Marcus Jones here, I tell you, he's just a heck of a player. Just a speed rush. They kind of turned him to the inside, and Marcus came straight up the field and got the big paw out there and made a nice tackle. Rod Brown has done most of the ball carrying for NC State. He's carried five times now for 29 yards. It's going to be second and ten. Army getting good protection. Incomplete intended for Jimmy Grissett, but it was overthrown. Fuzzy Lee, 47, had the coverage right at the goal line. Well, Ted Kane, the offense coordinator, had what one, got what he wanted set up that time. He had three receivers to the wide side of the field. Grissett was alone over there. He had the single coverage and had inside position. Terry Harvey let the ball sail a little bit on him on that play. Otherwise, it could have been a touchdown for the Wolfpack. 
So it'll bring up third and ten. The ball still just inside the North Carolina 20. Now Harvey steps up. Now he lets it go in the end zone. Touchdown to Greg Addis. Robert Williams was on him, but Addis went up and got it. A 19-yard touchdown as Harvey went right to the line of scrimmage to get away from the pressure and then let it go. Well, that's a field general for you. Terry Harvey knows where he's at on the field. Watch the cornerback here. He's going to think that the quarterback's going to run. He steps up. Oh, that's a cardinal sin there for a cornerback. Let the receiver get behind him. Always make sure the quarterback passes the line of scrimmage before you give up the coverage. Nice job by the Wolfpack. Mark Promonte. 25 out of 26 extra points this year. Bangs it through there. And with 2.21 to go in the first quarter, the game is tied at seven. You see Harvey here, he's dropping back. He's got three receivers to his left. That's where he's got to throw the ball. He steps up, then he takes a 90 degree turn and throws it out over to Addis. Like I said earlier, the cornerback stepped up and thought he's going to make a tackle on the quarterback. And another... Carolina with a first and 10. They'll mark it right at the 16. Early in the second quarter of a 7-7 tie. Pitch to Leon Johnson and a reverse to Marcus Wall. Marcus spinning up to about the 25. He's going to be short of the first down in the grasp of number nine, Jason Perry, and 73, Mike Harrison. At 290, ran all the way over there to help out. Steve, this is one of those games where you don't leave anything in the playbook or uh, on, out there that you could have called. Give your offense an opportunity to do something big, and uh, that's what they're trying to do. Both teams have run reverses today. Second about one. Leon breaks free. Johnson out to cross the 40 before he's dragged down again. It's Jason Perry on the stop. Gain of 16 for Johnson. And another North Carolina first down. Well, when Leon Johnson has blocking up front like this, look at the hole he's got. Watch Babb take him to the inside. Good block there by the tackle who comes in. That one wasn't bad. That was his replacement. Leon Johnson just gets his shoulders down. He's just going north and south straight down the field. It's not going to affect that ankle on him. From the Tar Heel, 41. Thomas to throw. Complete to Marcus Wall, and he is blasted by Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell, no relation to the late great USC and NFL running back, except that he does wear the same jersey number. And I mean, he saw that play coming and just blasted Marcus Wall, who was slow to get up. I think the referees are stopping the play. Watch your bells at the bottom of your screen. He's going to break on the ball to the outside here. Just catch Marcus Wall as he turns forward. Payal. It's a good hit by a defensive back coming up, making a tackle. Here he is now again. Oh, you can see that you can feel the impact on that one, Steve. What the coaches like to call a form tackle. Exactly. And it put some type of a form on the face of Marcus Swall. It is second and six. Watson near the 50. Dewan Everett, number 16, and Brian Brooks, 92, make the tackle. For a gain of five yards. Well, they run down, down the field. This North Carolina offense is very potent, giving the ball to the fullback or the tailback straight ahead. Looks like they're having the most success doing that for their offense. Ball on the 50, About a yard one. short of the first down marker will bring up third and one right at midfield. Ken Pettis signaling to his defense. Leon Johnson bouncing off the pile, has enough for the first down as he gets to about the 47 of NC State, Morocco Brown on the stop. Let's get another report from Drew Smith. Drew. All right, let's get an update right now on Russell Babb, the Carolina offensive lineman, who, by the way, is a Moorhead scholar, meaning he is a very good academic student. Uh, Russell Babb, as I mentioned earlier in the first quarter, suffered a fractured tibia. We understand that it's called an open fracture, meaning he's being taken back to the hospital in Chapel Hill. He's going to have to have surgery. Obviously, his season is over. Thank you, Drew. Thomas to pass on first down, has time, and hits Leon Johnson at the 45. 
for a gain of about three. Juan Everett, number 16, again Everett making the tackle. The on the 45. Leon Johnson, number one receiver, as you mentioned earlier, Gary, now has 54 yards rushing in the game also on just five carries. Yeah, the numbers just seem to pile up on him. He's got a couple of catches. I think that may tie him with the, the single season record for North Carolina in one season as far as a receiver. The fullback Maurice McGregor, who is 260 pounds for short yardage. Play action, and he swings it out to Mark to Leon Johnson, and Johnson has the first down. He got a fine block over there before Jason Perry ran him out of bounds from Scott Overbeck, the guy who came into the game to replace Russell Babb. Overbeck, number 63, helped break him for just enough for the first down. Yeah, Overbeck's a senior. He knows how to play this game. He's come in and made a couple of nice blocks already to spring some plays for this Carolina offense. Watch here. You're going to see Thomas just step back. It's a little play action pass and a little slip screen. You see Overbeck out front. He kicks the cornerback out, and Johnson's right behind it for the play. Good job that time by the Carolina offense. It's a gain of nine and a first down for the Tar Heels at the 34. Jonathan Linton back in at tailback. And it's Chris Watson, the fullback, who gets about five inside the 30, dragging a couple of guys with him, including Chris McNeil, number 43, and Morocco Brown. That offensive line is continuing to push, come off the ball, the center, and both guards are doing a nice job inside, allowing Watson to get straight up the field yardage. As the rain continues to fall, Gary, who do you think is favored? The passing of NC State or the putters running in that backfield for the Tar Heels? Well, I don't think that the rain is that much of a factor right now. They're drawing the ball between plays. It's not, it's not completely you know, soaked down there, so if they keep the ball dry, it'll be fine for both teams. Jonathan Linton tripped up on a good play by 91 Mark Lawrence, who broke through, a junior from Wayne, New Jersey, getting in the backfield. This state defense, they need to put rebound here. The Carolina's kind of driven down the field. They need to stop here on this third and four situation. It'd be a good time for them to you know, put some pressure on the quarterback and see what they can do here to stop these guys. North Carolina's been pretty good today on third down conversions. They've converted three of four. And they face third and four right now. Again, good protection for Thomas, who goes long in the end zone. Incomplete. It was almost intercepted, intended for Darren Ashford. But Brandon Davis, the safety, and Ricky Bell, the corner, were both back there. And they had excellent position on Ashford. That was good poise, good coverage that time by the Carolina State defense. See him here on the outside. Just going to run a little corner, or excuse me, a little post route down the field and try to get behind the cornerback, which he does. But the safety is there to give him some help. Well, if the ball had been a little bit sooner on the target, could have been a touchdown for Carolina. And floated just enough to allow the defenders to get back in and make the play. And Carolina is going to go for it on fourth and four. This year, they're 12 of 21 on fourth down conversion. Thomas over the middle, complete. Touchdown, Carolina. Octavius Barnes breaking free and going through untouched for a 28-yard score. Well, that play was made possible because of the strong, strong arm that Mike Thomas possesses. He just rifled that ball, Steve, to a quick little post pattern to Barnes right down the field. He got inside on the, on the safety, just threw a strike right at the numbers, took it right in for the score. Another impressive drive by the Tar Heels, their second. As they go back out in front, Scott Caparelli on for the extra point. Greg Williams, the holder. And it's 14 to 7. North Carolina with 8.03 left to go in the first half. Here Barnes, he gets inside. The ball's going to be right on the money for Mike Thomas. Nice job by Carolina. Another impressive drive by the Tar Heels. They went 89 yards earlier, 84 yards culminated by this pass from Thomas to Barnes. Well, look at the protection, Steve. He's got a lot of time to throw. Watch him right for the ball, right over the top, right on the money to Barnes, beyond the outstretched arms of the linebacker and inside on the cornerback. Good job that time by Carolina. Mike Thomas, by the way, is a two-sport athlete himself. He throws, you know, he's an outfielder for the uh, Carolina offense when he's, excuse me, for the Carolina baseball team. Here he is There's on the sideline, yeah. 
trying to stay dry and taking the, the handshakes from his teammates. And again, Carolina with over five minutes on the clock as they moved it down the field well. Caparelli kicks off very short kick, very high. Taken by Carlos King, the backup fullback. And NC State's going to have real good field position. I can't believe that that kick was on purpose. Uh, Steve, I think it was. You know, when you have a weather situation like this, the ball a little bit slippery, perhaps you kick it high and pooch it over to the corner. Caparelli's got to you know, kick that ball high and get a guy who's not used to catching the ball, possibly he'll drop it and get a big play for the, for the defense. But wouldn't you want to squib it in this type of a wet situation? Try to get the, the uh, fumble? That may be coming later, Steve. <laughs> Well, anyway, Carolina State gets pretty good field position as they'll start at their own 31 now. Their touchdown came after a turnover. And we've got a penalty as a violation of the fair catch rule is being assessed against North Carolina State. So apparently, Carlos called for a fair catch and then ran with the ball after catching it. Well, actually, one of the deep guys called the fair catch, and whoever calls the fair catch, it goes for the entire team, and that's what happened. I didn't see him, so I, that must have been the case. It moves it back to the 26 now, so not quite as good a field position to start for the Wolfpack, and Harvey may be changing the play. Carlos King is in at fullback. Play action, and Harvey hits Jimmy Grissett. He was bumped out of bounds, close to a first down. Terry Phillips had the coverage, and it's going to be another first down for NC State. Well, Terry Harvey, 13. Terry Harvey, if he has enough time to throw the ball, you know, he's going to be able to make these kind of throws. Good protection that time, and the ball's outside of Grissom on timing. Good job there by the Carolina State offense. That moves it up just short of the 40, first and 10. 7.54 to go in the second quarter. Carolina leading state 14 to 7. Jermaine Stevens and nowhere to run. Right in the hole was James Hamilton, number 54. Steve Carolina's defense, they had nine players within about a couple of yards of the line of scrimmage that time. They were really loading up on the run in that formation for Carolina State. Well, one of the things you talked about was how key Tremaine Stevens was going to be to NC State. So far, the Carolina defense has done a good job of containing him. Yeah, they've held him pretty much in check. He just needs a little crease and some speed. He's running down the field. He's got enough speed to make a big play. They like to just give him the ball enough times throughout the day to ha possibly have one of those plays happen. To him. Stevens has gained only 15 yards so far. He's out of there now. Carlos King, the lone setback. Harvey with a quick drop and a completion to Grissett again. At the Carolina 49, tackled by Fuzzy Lee. Another good job of protection that time by the Carolina State offense. The Redmond brothers had Marcus Jones right in his face. Gain there it is, you see Jones. Watch the Redmond brothers. They both tag team this guy. They're just pushing him. They're going to stay after him the whole day, the whole day. <laughs> Those guys are relentless. They are something. They are country, and they are proud of it. And they really stick together. At 265 and 290, when they get together, there's no getting through. Harvey's going long. Incomplete and almost intercepted. In fact, Sean Boyd, the free safety, didn't turn around quite soon enough, or he might have picked that ball up. It actually hit him. Well, there was a coverage break that time by Carolina. I think the cornerback was expected to go with him. The safety kind of drifted over Boyd. He really didn't have primary coverage on the play. But luckily, he did turn and spin into the ball, and it just, just hit him, and it came down. You can watch at the end of the play here. Boy, just going to turn around, and whoop, the ball hits him. <laughs> he just hit around a little quicker. He may have an interception. Almost face guarding himself. Second and 10. Play action. Harvey. Almost picked off again, this time by Brian Simmons, who had the coverage on Mike Guppy. Pass intended for Guppy. Play action pass just took a little too long to develop, but good Simmons coverage that time on the play. outside down. by Simmons. He was step for step, had good position on him. He was trailing the receiver. The ball comes, he steps in. He should have made the play. Could have been a touchdown for Carolina. Watch here as you can see the play action by Harvey. And then Simmons is going to go out to his right here and trail the receiver. Steps in front of the play. Should have had an interception and gone there, but... Uh, 
Guffey did a nice job, I guess, knocking the ball loose. See here at the end, you can see if Guffey becomes a defender, which I think he does, his left arm gets in there inside on Simmons where he can't catch the ball. So it's third and ten, and NC State three of six on third down conversion. Guffey rolling with some help, trying to move the pocket and go long. Mike Guffey is out there, but it's overthrown. Terry Billups running stride for stride with Guffey. And it's going to be fourth and long. And a flag is down where Harvey was apparently hit after the pass. Well, if that's the case, that's a break for the Carolina State offense. Continue this drive. They need to continue and get first downs, whether it's by running, throwing, or we get a penalty here. We'll get the call from referee Michael Dover. Roughing the pass. 15 yard penalty. Please come to the automatic first down. Please well, Harvey just rolled to his left that time, and the, the defensive pressure was there. I think it's hard to ask a quarterback, especially on a field like this, to go to his left, a right-handed throwing quarterback, and then turn back to the field and throw all the way down the field. And by that time, the defense has a chance to catch up. Well, it's a big penalty, not only in the fact that it'll keep NC State's drive alive, but it moves the ball now just inside the Carolina 35. Where it's first and ten again. Mac Brown's wondering what the call was. He really didn't understand the penalty, but first down nonetheless. Tremaine Stevens breaking free inside the 20 and down near the 15 before he's tackled by the safety Sean Boyd and cornerback Fuzzy Lee. Big, big lead there and a small lead here that may be evaporating for Carolina. An 18-yard gain and a first down for State. Carlos King taking the pitch, but he will lose yardage, and he may have lost the football. He did. Carolina has got it as Eric Thomas came up with a fumble recovery when Carlos King was stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Russell Davis, number 96, made the hit. And Eric Thomas came up with the football. Six minutes left in the half as Carolina turned state away. Well, watch your Harvey. He's just a lead blocker. It's just a quick pitch to the fullback. They took Stevens out of the game and went with a one-back set. And he drops the ball at the end of the play there, and Carolina comes up with it. Kind of a strange call. I, I really don't know why they're doing it. You can see a nice job there stripping the ball out by the defense. Carolina comes up with it. And I'll tell you, stops a, stops a drive here that was going pretty well for North Carolina State. Well, why would you take Tremaine Stevens out of the game? He just ran for 30 yards on the play and, and run a little option play with your quarterback as the lead blocker. And pitching it basically to the fullback as well rather than a tailback, although Carlos King does play both positions. First and 10, Carolina at the 15. Thomas with a quick drop, fires it to nobody. A little breakdown there as to which way the receiver was supposed to go. It was intended for Nate Brown, I guess, because he was the only receiver on this side of the field, but he had gone upfield. Mike Thomas read it as a hot route where he should have turned to the outside. The receiver continued on the slant. Thomas is saying, hey, my job is to throw it out of here on the pressure. And he threw it where he's supposed to, and I'm sure he told Brown, uh, get the signals right, watch these blitzers. Well, Nate Brown is a freshman, and that just could have been a freshman mistake. Here are Thomas's numbers so far. Second down, 10. Leon Johnson on a delay finds a big hole. And he's up to about the 21 before he's dragged down by James. Third down and three. Jonathan Linton gonna be very, very close. Linton at 250 pounds. Running right in there and James Walker the free safety up close, a little extracurricular activity going on as they unpile. And certainly Brian Brooks, number 92, thinks they got him stopped, and apparently they do. Ken Pettis has got his defense in Carolina State up there close, and the safety comes up, makes a nice play into the hole. Hey, a good defensive effort there by Carolina State. So Scott Caparelli will have to come on to kick it away. Greg Addis, number 25, dropping back for NC State at about his 35. Clock running with less than four and a half to go in the first half. Carolina leading State 14 to 7. A high hanger. Addis at the 37. Has a block. And he is whipped down at about the 42. Keith Newman, number nine. 
And Ronald Thomas, 42, with the special teams coverage. A 40-yard punt and a six-yard return. So NC State will have pretty good field position again as they go back on offense near midfield. Well, that's something that really hasn't happened much with Carolina State this year. Big play, a turnover, and their defense then responds with three and out situation, getting their offense back on the field. I tell you, the more time that the Carolina State offense is on the field, the defense feels a lot better, I tell you. First and 10 from the state, 43. Tremaine Stevens picking his way through and getting into the secondary. And a first down in Carolina territory at the 46. Dragged down by James Hamilton. I like that play. You know, go with the guys who got you here and bring you. That's, that's Steven. He's a pretty quality tailback, in my opinion. Just runs straight down the hill, finds the hole. He's got good vision. Watch here to the left side of the screen. Just a delay draw. And he's going to find it to his right. Right to the right there. Good blocking. Stevens comes through and makes about a, I guess here about a first down on the play, Steve. It was a pretty good run. Yep, a gain of 12 as he gets it to the 45 of Carolina. Rod Brown running straight ahead. He was some amazed made the first hit as Brown bounced off of him. And he's the leading tackler not only for the Carolina the defense, but the number one tackler in the ACC. Yeah, Carl Torbush, the defense coordinator from Carolina, is platooning his defensive linemen. They've got their number one guys in there now. The past couple of plays, it's been the, the number two. He's giving them a break, so here, potentially scoring, he's got his number ones in there. Second and six on the option, Tremaine Stevens trying to get outside. No way. James Hamilton Tremaine practically Stevens waiting for him for a loss the of four yards. And it'll be a loss back near the 45. Steve, one thing that is evident for both of these teams is when they're running the ball straight ahead with these running backs, both of them are quality, Stevens and Johnson for Carolina, and they're able to pick their holes instead of running laterally sideline to sideline. Uh, they seem to be more effective. I think the footing also may have something to do with that. It's third down and nine, and Harvey under some pressure. Does a good job of buying some time, but it's incomplete. Intended for Greg Addis at the 35. Bonnie Holiday, Harvey's number 90. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Chasing Addis. Harvey all Fourth over the place. Down. Things kind of broke down that time for Carolina State, but I, I credit North Carolina's defense. They did what they're supposed to do on defense. That is stay with the receivers down the field, especially while the quarterback is scrambling. Because that's generally when most of the big plays happen in the passing game. Things will break down up front. The quarterback takes a little extra time to throw the ball, and they did a nice job of staying with the receivers. Freshman Jay Dukes on to punt. Octavius Barnes dropping back for Carolina. And about the 10. Dukes trying to get it to die inside the 10, but a fair catch by Barnes will cause that to happen at the 9. And a flag goes down. As Barnes took the catch, the official back there threw the flag. Michael Kane doesn't like that call. I, th I think they're going to call that he was bumped. He was calling for a fair catch, but he was bumped. Well, they've got to give him it. two yards. Yeah, there's a little zone area that they call. We'll see what the referee has to say. Fair catch in offense. Five yards, violation of the two yard bail. Five yard penalty, first down. That's exactly the call, and Michael Kane ran all the way down there. You can see it here. He's definitely a fair catch here, and I think he's going to get bumped just before he catches it, right there on the shoulder. I don't know. I'll tell you what. I know. I missed that. I don't think he bumped him. He's just well, running by. In the opinion of the official, Alvis Witted, number 80, was too close. I don't think he bumped him either. <laughs> anyway, it moves the ball out to the 14. First down, Carolina. And the fullback will get a yard or two. And that is all. Chris Watson carrying. Well, we'll take another look at the, the punt here. But look how wide the guy is away from him. I mean, he's not even close. Yet they still have the penalty. The official that drew the flag was on the other side of the field, and his depth of field may have yeah, he, caused him to believe that Whitted was actually closer. I think he had the same perception that we had from the near side of the field. Second and eight as Watson gained two. Leon Johnson behind a good block, picks his way across the 20. Close to the 22. Brian Honeycutt, number 62, walled off the area and allowed Johnson to dance around him. You know, with a little experience, that's what Leon Johnson knows now. He says, run up there, find the hole, step to the left, and get up there as we see the injured player going off the field. That's Jason McGeorge, a junior out of Plantation, Florida, who 
plays a lot on special teams. Who is apparently injured and going to the training room. Trying to keep those balls dry. Third down, two yards to go. Play action. Thomas firing incomplete. Octavius Barnes could not hold on. Out at the 35. Hassan Chamsuddin had the coverage for State. So Carolina again will have to punt it away as NC State's defense twice in a row now has held the Tar Heels deep in their own territory. Good job by the defense that time. Two, three and outs in a row. Good job by the Carolina State defense now with just about under a minute to go here in the, in the, in the first half. They're going to get the ball a good field position, possibly up in midfield. Caparelli trying to keep the hands dry and warm. We'll punt it to Greg Addis. State's got a return on, and Addis is going to take it at the 40. Gets a block and is hammered at the 48 of Carolina. Shane Pearson, number 58, a redshirt freshman out of Kingsport, Tennessee, met Addis head on, and Greg is slow to get up. A 38 yard punt and a seven yard return, and Pearson with the stick. Okay, two good plays by two special teamers that time. Uh, the returner just runs straight down the field, tries to get as much positive yardage as he can, and and then the, the guy covering the kick also makes a nice tackle on the play. State with a first and 10, and they have 49 seconds remaining in the half. They've got three timeouts, Steve. Plenty of time and plenty of opportunity to move the ball down the field to score. Harvey trying to run it himself. It's inside the 45, dragged down by Bonnie Holliday, number 90. Timeout now, called by State. 39 seconds remaining in the half. North Carolina leading 14 to 7. I don't know what we expected. A, a game that's going to take the pace of running the ball, play action, throw the ball a little bit, spread it around the field, get Stevens the ball a little bit, and also get Johnson a lot of his carries from North Carolina. Both these teams are very similar on offense and very similar on defense. And that's why these teams they never really have a big margin of victory on either side. It's generally, they're, they're close games. And the emotion helps, too. You've got guys out there that sometimes will play a little above their head in a game like this well, because this is, of the importance of it to them personally and to their team. Sure, this is bragging rights in the state of North Carolina. A lot of these kids played against each other in high school and, and the surrounding states around here. Uh, it's a good, good matchup that uh, these guys, they really play at an extra high level when they have a chance to play each other. Well, one of the quotes in the newspaper this morning here was, hey, the rest of the country may not care about this game, but we do. Yeah, and I know the North, North Carolina State players, this is going to be their last game of the year for them. And the seniors, they want to go out on a positive note. And that's one of the things that Mike O'Kane had his, his team focus on, you know, four or five weeks ago when they realized they were one in five, one in six, that things weren't going well for them. They said, hey, let's forget about what happened early. Let's start putting some good things together. And they've really gotten better over the second half of the season. And they'd really like to end the season on a positive note. And if Carolina doesn't win, this will be their last game of the that's season. True. Because they've got to get that sixth win to go to a bowl game. 39 seconds left in the half. It's second and six at the Carolina 44. And preliminary movement along the line of scrimmage, and now they'll stop the play. And I don't know whether Carolina was drawn off or whether they just jumped, but two flags are down. Dead ball foul. Offside, Carol defense, five-yard penalty for two-second down. Yeah, they got Marcus Jones that time, Steve, for jumping in the neutral zone and influenced the guard and the tackle to jump. Big guy up there, he's going to make them both jump. <laughs> well, that moves it just inside the 40. Harvey. Just gets it away in time. Mike Guffey inside the 20. Brought down at about the 12. Clock stops on the first down with 31 seconds to go. Eric Thomas made the stop. Three wideouts to the right side and two to the far side. They've got five receivers spread out across the field. Watch the quarterback draw. There it is. Harvey straight up the middle. Touchdown, State!
Steve, and that's an old favorite by a lot of offensive coordinators. Spread the field, get your guys way out away from the, the interior five, let those guys go out and cover them, and I tell you what, if you ask your offensive lineman to block four guys up front for just a minute or so, or a second or so, give your quarterback a shot and go through there. Watch, he's gonna come right at you. Just four guys up front for Carolina. Good job with a little angle blocking and Terry Harvey straight down the field. Good job, good call that time by Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator. So Mark Tremonti on to attempt the extra point. It is good. 26 seconds left in the half as State ties it up on Harvey's 13-yard run. It is 14 all. Well, Harvey, he's just going to turn it up here. I, you know, he's not a great running quarterback, but I tell you, if you get as much room as he has there to go back and make a play, he's going to get it in there. Credit to that offensive line. They did a nice job of picking up the defensive lineman from Carolina. And ever, like I said, everyone was spread out. They had the safeties spread wide because all the receivers were out. The tail, there was no running backs in the backfield and did a nice job there of moving the players away from the interior so that your quarterback can run in the, uninhibited down the field. About the only guy that could have stopped him short of a goal line was the umpire. And he was just getting out of the way. So we'll see what kind of kickoff State comes up with here with 26 seconds left. The rain continuing to fall. The field and the ball a little bit wet. Chris Hensler, a sophomore out of Durham, doing the kicking off. And that drive took only three plays and 23 seconds for State to tie the game. Steve, you've been talking about a squib kick. They're going to squib it. I think this will be the time to do it. Here you go. Carolina will have 26 seconds on the clock, but as soon as the ball is touched by a member of the receiving team, that clock will start. Marcus Wall, the man in the middle. Chris Watson and Greg Williams back with him. But this ball may not get that far. Yep. It's a squibber. Jonathan Linton picks it up. And Linton, horse that he is, runs it out to about the 43. Jason Perry drags him down there. 21 seconds left on the clock in the first half. And we'll see what Carolina elects to do with that remaining time. They have pretty good field position here. Decent field position. They've got a quarterback that can really throw the football. Mike Thomas has the strong, strong arm as we've seen earlier today. He can get the ball down the field. And they have a little package here for the end of the, end of the half or end of the game. They can move the ball effectively down the field. Watch them flood the field and try to get somebody on a quick out pattern so they get 15, 20 yards at a time. Three wide outs in the game. Thomas from the shotgun. Lots of time. Over the middle, complete to Octavius Barnes. And Barnes got away from a couple of guys and gets it inside the state 40 before he's dragged down by Hassan Johnson Dean. Nice job of moving the ball. The ball's going to, the clock is stopping when they move the chains here. 16 yard gain. They're not calling timeout. North Carolina has only one timeout left. And they're trying to save it. Now, seven seconds. Now the clock has stopped again. It started. And Thomas tried to stop it with the spike. What was it? That was it at 12? Yeah, I thought it was at 12, and now it's at 8. I, I, you know, for that, to the pull, referee starts the play, pulls it up, and throws it in. I don't know if that takes four seconds. Well, nothing from the officials about adjusting the time on the clock. Second and 10, but more importantly, only eight seconds show on the game clock. Nice snap handled by Thomas. Throwing out to nobody. Octavius Barnes was out there, but the pass well wide of him. Now only four seconds remain on the clock. We'll look for Mike Thomas here to throw the ball up deep to a probably a three receiver side here. They call it the jump play. They call it Big Ben, actually, North Carolina, their offense. Well, up until this point, they might have been trying to get down and use their last time out to kick a field goal, but now. They're too far back and don't have enough time, so they're probably going to have to heave it. And get the three wide receiver to the near side. Thomas is just going to heave it up and see if he can get a, a good play in the end zone. You better get rid of it. He just does. Tipped, tipped, and caught for a touchdown. Darren Ashford got the tip for a Carolina touchdown with no time showing on the clock. 
that's why offenses run that play. It's really it's a no-risk situation for them. They throw it down there, and hopefully one of their receivers can either jump up and catch the ball. They normally have a jumper, and they have guys that surround the football. They're called the tip players. And that's exactly what happened that time. It went through the hands of a state player. I don't know who it was, and resulted in a touchdown for Carolina. Darren Asher is not the tallest guy either. He's 5'11". But he came up with it, staying with it all the way. And now Caparelli will attempt the extra point with no time left on the clock. It was a 40-yard pass play from Thomas to Ashford. And it's blocked. And a flag goes down after it was picked up. James Walker, the free safety, appeared to block that kick. But a flag went down at the end of the play, so even though time has expired, we've got to sort out the penalty before the half penalty is going to be officially. Thrown forward. Penalty declined. Okay, that's all they were doing was throwing over. the ball forward. Two touchdowns in the last 49 seconds of the first half. Caparelli's had a problem with balls being blocked. He was only going to kick the extra points. Here's the end of the play for the touchdown. See, the ball is going to be in the end zone, and the Carolina State defenders are going to have it in their hands first. If we can let it run here, we'll take a look at it. Here it is. You can see him now just coming up here. But that's after the, after the fact, after it's already been tipped. Looked like Jason Perry there, number nine, was the first guy to touch it. Yeah, Thomas took a pretty good lick there. Good rush on the outside. And watch him here. Watch his reaction. Oh, yes. Pay dirt. Well, he just did get it away as Brian Brooks had a hold of him. And Thomas, who's pretty darn strong at 230 and six foot three, got it. In the middle of the third quarter, the Tar Heels added to their lead when Chris Welch kicked a career-best 48-yard field goal. So with the score now 23-14 in favor of UNC, let's return to our broadcast with 10:39 left in the third quarter here on ESPN Classic. We'll kick off for the Tar Heels. 23-14 now as Chris Welch kicks his first career field goal and not too shabby to do it in the rivalry game and a 48-yarder at that. And the serious wetness continues here in Raleigh. In fact, it has chased some folks out of the stands and a few people off the hillside as well. But the hardy souls that remain seem to be enjoying themselves despite the dampness. Welch will also now kick off. Alvis Witt at number 80 and Torrey Holt 81. Back for State. Alvis Witt it from the eight. And guess who? Number 49, Jamie Carrick's made about every tackle for Carolina on kickoff coverage today. Witted brings it out near the 25, where NC State will start. Now trailing by nine. Eric Richard Freshman making his presence felt on the special team. Brown and Stevens in the backfield behind Harvey. Harvey rolling under pressure, threw it into the ground. He was being chased by Andre Purvis, and the Carolina fans want an intentional grounding flag, but he did have a receiver. In fact, both backs were swinging out. Harvey is just a play action. He's going to roll behind the backs, and then you get inside pressure. Well, I'm going to back up and get rid of this ball. It's going to be a screen right in front of him, so he does the thing he's supposed to and throw it into the ground. There's a possession this time by NC State. What they've done this today, a couple of punts, a couple of touchdowns, and the one fumble there. Harvey is 7 of 19 passing for 96 yards and a touchdown. Jermaine Stevens trying to take it outside. Too much defensive company. Led by Eric Thomas, number 38, the safety. Also stringing it out was Greg Ellis, the left defensive end, number 87. Carolina bottled it up at the point of attack there, and State tried to get around the corner. Stevens thinks he has the speed to make it. Good cover, I mean, good, good pursuit that time by the Carolina defense. The loss of two, or about one, back to the 24, third and 11. Oh, 
Harvey from the shotgun. Complete to Mike Guffey, who's wide open but slips down at about the 45. He might have had more because there weren't any defenders very close to him when he caught the ball. But it's a first down and a big third down conversion, a gain of 20. Terry Harvey, a senior, experienced quarterback. He's going to find the open receiver. It's a breakdown on coverage by Carolina. State reads it well and gets outside. And I'll tell you, if Guffey doesn't slip, he's going to get about 10 or 15 yards. Guffey here is on the inside, and he's going to work to the outside. Got the receiver running through the zone, so he clears it out. Guffey catches the ball on the outside. Boy, I tell you, Steve, he'd had a big play if he hadn't slipped. Yep, he only has one guy to beat to go all the way. Harvey has time again, lofts this one out, complete to Greg Addis, who came back for the ball. And I don't know whether it was intended for Addis or Tremaine That's Stevens, but it worked. James Hamilton got Addis yards, out of bounds. And a first down. But he has enough yardage for another state first down. Well, you see Harvey here, he's throwing it out to a spot. He thinks the receiver's there, but Addis is doing just what you said, Steve. He's coming back to the football. That's what receivers are taught to do. I think Stevens, he's running more of a flat route. The receiver probably was Addis. Gain of 13. NC State moving the ball after giving up the 48-yard field goal to Carolina. Rod Brown dragged down by Marcus Jones. Oh, he might have had more yardage. Short gain on the play. Just about eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 23-14, Carolina. Tremaine Stevens trying to squeak through there. But Brian Simmons David will have none of it as he closes down in a hurry and holds Stevens for a gain of about one to the 40. Where it's going to be third down and about six or seven to go. Carolina really converged on the ball that time. Stevens had a little delay. And I'll tell you, the secondary came up, filled the hole. Good job that time by Carolina. NC State's been very good, especially here in this drive, of converting on third down. And they've got a third and six right here. Harvey has to get it away in a hurry, and it's too tall for Addis. Out of bounds on the far side. Robert Williams, 29, had the coverage for Carolina. Fourth down decision-making time here for Mike O'Kane and NC State. Well, you hear the fans. A lot of them are saying go. I think it's probably a pretty good call at this point in the game. You know, they're down by, what, nine points? Need to get back into this football game. He's going to bring up fourth down. At the 40. And about six yards to go. Now. North Carolina called a timeout. I believe they did. Tar Heels have the lead. 23 to 14 here in the third. But NC State driving. And they've got a fourth and six at the Carolina 40. They're still going to go for it after the timeout. Good protection for Harvey, who's got all day. Lofting it for Alice, who was wide open and has it go right through his hands. Addis had plenty more than the needed yardage for the first down, and Sean Boyd, the free safety, was over there, but wasn't close enough. And Addis, I think, might have been thinking about getting more instead of just catching the ball. Well, remember the play early in the game where Addis went behind the uh, behind the defender when Terry Harvey started to run. The defender came up. That's exactly what happened again on that play and left him wide open. Normally a sure-handed receiver. Addis would like to have that ball back. So North Carolina taking over on downs. Just inside their 40. Watson and Johnson in the backfield behind Thomas who wants to swing it out to Johnson and misses it. Thomas is Chris McNeil, number 43, was coming in there and got a hand up that may have disrupted the pattern. Let's get a report down on the field from Drew Smith. Drew, how about sideline duty on a day like today? <laughs> it would have to rain, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would have to rain, and it's getting colder and colder and colder, Steve. And I, I think that the turf is really slickening up right now. And I talked to a couple of the NC State managers. They said they're having a tough time keeping the balls dry right now. But all they're using are, is towels, so basically no uh, uh, 
technology to keep the uh, footballs dry. Just try to towel them off and keep them as dry as they can. Yeah, sometimes I have heaters, but not here as Leon Johnson is hit in the backfield a couple of times. And drop for a loss, Chris McNeil again, number 43, in there for NC State. Good solid play that time by NC State, coming through there and getting Johnson in the backfield. Hey, whenever you get him stopped on his side of the line, that's a big play because Johnson is a quality back and able to make people miss. Take a look at it here. Johnson's just going to get the ball right there and watch the defender come straight in. A good tackle, get him up around and keep going after him. Got all the guys coming to help, and he comes back to make the play. Good job. Back of a double effort by McNeil. It brings up third and 11. Now back at the 38 of Carolina. Thomas has time. Fires it complete to Octavius Barnes. Barnes with a first down and then some. Down to the state 42. Jason Perry got him in the secondary. Nice play that time by Carolina. Get Octavius Barnes underneath the coverage and let him run with the ball. Does a good job with it after the catch. Octavius Barnes is one of those receivers that, you know, he has a lot of potential, big playability. He runs real well, and you see him here as he comes across the middle of the screen. He just catches the ball and makes people miss. He's a, he has the ability to do that. Good speed, as I said, and breaks tackles. He's a big receiver, and that's what they like here at Carolina. Barnes now has caught four balls for 76 yards. That was a gain of 20. Leon Johnson on first down, stumbling a little bit in the backfield. I don't know if that was a result of the turf or not, but he didn't have a good head of steam. Dewan Everett, number 16, met him. Game, maybe a yard. Yeah, Octavius has played well for this Carolina team. He's got four receptions for 80 yards, the one touchdown, and 20-yard average. That's a pretty good day for a wide receiver. I have a feeling that they have not stopped going to him either. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. Carolina leading by nine, 23 to 14, and they are driving. Second down. Thomas on the option pass. Looking and completing it to Ashford, who's out of bounds at the six. James Walker, the free safety. Pass complete to Ashford. Prevented him from going into the end zone. But Darren Ashford's made a couple of big plays. Now a 36-yarder. One thing that coaches would like to see more from Mike Thomas, a little more touch on the football, and that's exactly what he gives you here. He just lays it out to the outside, smooth pass, lets the receiver run underneath the ball. Good pass. Ashford makes a nice catch. Good job that time by Carolina. Just a little play action here. Mike Thomas steps back on the option pass, throws it out where he needs to, and Ashford makes a nice grab. First and goal. Leon Johnson, touchdown. What a big turnaround in this game as NC State went for it on fourth and six. They did not come up with the play. Carolina takes over on downs and drives it right back down the field to score. Well, give it to your money, man. Leon Johnson straight ahead. Good blocking at the point of attack, and Johnson just picks his way through there for the touchdown. Chris Welch is on, number 19, as Leon's on the sidelines. To attempt the extra point, Greg Williams will again do the holding. And Welch, who kicked the 48-yard field goal, the first field goal of his career earlier, knocks it right through there. 5.42 to go in the third. It's now 30 to 14, North Carolina, as Leon Johnson seven. 3.39 to go. Harvey playing his last game. Trying to pull it out, completes it to Jimmy Grissett, who's out of bounds at the 34, run out by Brian Simmons. 15 yards, and first down. Terry Harvey is still out there, still leading this team. It's his final game as we talked about, Steve, and he's a, you know, he's a heck of a ball player. And as you said, we talked about earlier, his baseball opportunities here when this season ends. And they have a nice career in professional baseball. Now we might see him in the big leagues in a few years. Three minutes, 32 seconds left as the clock stops on the out of bounds. Harvey trying to buy some time. Now he's going to throw back to Grissett as they try to set up a wide receiver screen. Grissett's got some running room. Dancing out of bounds in Carolina territory at about the 42. Stopping the clock with 3.23 to play, a gain of 23. Nicely executed to Grissett, you know, wide receiver screen. You're going to see Harvey rolls to his right, and he's going to throw back across the field to Grissett, who's got a blocker in front of him here, and kicks the cornerback out. Watch the block right here. 
Grissett comes inside of him, then his speed, he turns it on and makes a nice play for, for State. That was Steve Keim who made the block on Fuzzy Lee. Grissett now has caught six balls for 85 yards. It is first and 10. NC State at the Carolina 42. They give Harvey good protection. Over the middle, complete to Mike Guffey. Down near the 15, Fuzzy Lee made Pass the stop complete for Carolina. Carolina Guffey. The first down stops Fuzzy the clock Lee makes with 3 on the to go. Yard line. NC State has one timeout remaining. That's a 27-yard game. Yard Good to see Guffey get back in the action early in the game. He, he dropped a couple of balls, Steve, that might have helped this Wolfpack offense move the ball a little bit better. But uh, Terry Harvey knows he's a quality receiver. And he's going to try to find him. Also, Guffey's last game for NC State. Harvey with a short drop, and it's a completion to Greg Addis at the one. Pass complete Addis, to Addis knocked down by Fuzzy Lee, Fuzzy short Lee of the goal line. Two yard line. Again, the clock stops Ready with the first, first down at 254 to play. Addis actually looked a little surprised that that football was there right on time and right in the bread basket. Good throw that time by Harvey. Now the clock restarts, less than 250 to go. State trying to draw closer here. There's still plenty of time remaining if they score here and get the ball back. Power eye formation in the backfield. Kevin Mateer, second effort and a touchdown for NC Mateer State. For the touchdown. That's what Michael Kane told me. He said, this team has really developed a nice attitude. There's no quit in them. He had none of his players going to the tank, as I said earlier. And being able to move the ball late in the game when things don't look good, they're going to try to do that. Now it's very imperative for them to get down here and go for two because they have to do that to get in within another striking distance of the next possession. So if, they, if, they're, if they're not able to get two points here, they're going to have to have two more scores, two, two more possessions, and that's not going to be easy to do against this Carolina offense. It is now a 10-point difference, so they've got to go for two. 30 to 20, North Carolina leading. 2.36 left to go. Most teams, Steve, have a, have a play designed for this, and uh, I think Carolina... As a, as a defense out there that's able to match up with most anything, but the play that they did real well was spread the thing wide open. Have everybody get out of there in that quarterback draw that State ran earlier, maybe something they'll look at again. Harvey throwing in the end zone for Grissett. He's got it. The two-point conversion in front of Terry Phillips makes it 30 to 22. Now it is an eight-point Carolina lead and 2.36 left on the clock. Nice execution that time by State, moving the ball down the field. Terry Harvey just had a, had a heck of a drive that time, throwing the ball effectively to find the guys that were open. But Chris had made a couple of plays, and that's what this team needs. They need to be able to move the ball effectively like that. Now they're going to be probably going to see an onside kick here as Grissett, you know, he's wide open in the outs outside there. Phillips just gave him too much cushion. And when you do that, you know, it's an easy throw and catch for an experienced quarterback and receiver. Here's another look at it, just throwing it outside. You can see the, the distance between the defender and the receiver. Well, NC State with an impressive 80-yard drive in just five plays. They only used a minute 23 to score. Kevin Mateer took it in from a two-yard distance for the touchdown with good second effort. He was actually hit by Marcus Jones and was able to still get in the end zone. Steve, you're going to see the speed guys and the hands guys on the field right now. North Carolina is lined up in a what we call a prevent for the uh, onside kick return. And these guys for, for State are down here, and they're huddling up, and they're going to be sprinting down the field as the kick is made and hopefully come up with a recovery. Well, instead of Chris Hensler, who has been doing the kicking off for State, it's going to be Mark Bramante, who ordinarily is the field goal kicker as well, to do what we expect to be an onside kick. And that's real onside, because I think it fell off the tee. Well, the kicker's actually lined it up like that. Oh, he's going to put it like that. Yeah, so he's going to keep it low to the ground and get a little hop on it. Watch it now. And a good job by Leon Johnson to just smother that ball. Team leading receiver might as well step up and catch another one. That's right. The man with the hands. So State had to try it. Carolina comes up with a good play. And our... Genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are for the University of North Carolina. Leon Johnson, who has carried so far 26 times for 131 yards and two touchdowns. And for NC State, Terry Harvey, who's 14 of 32 for 217 yards passing and one touchdown. The 
fullback into the line for just a short game. Chris Watson. The whistle had blown, and that's not going to be allowed, even though Ricky Bell not taking any chances. And Terry Harvey there, our other Chevrolet player of the game. And celebrating its 25th year Watson sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Leon Johnson and Terry Harvey, our genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Steve, playing this game the way it has here just past Thanksgiving, which was yesterday, uh, both of these teams had an opportunity to, you know, to, to reflect on what they've had over the season. A lot of parents came in for the game here at State and also at uh, University of North Carolina, and they were able to, to have a meal with the kids yesterday, and it was a, a real nice touch for them to be able to do that. Watson lost a yard. It's second and 11 as Leon Johnson tries to add to his total. Trying to stay Leon in bounds. He slides point. down to do so at about the 42. Keep that Third clock down. running as it is with a minute 40 left. Get a bunch and of get him over here. NC State has one timeout remaining. It's third down if they can stop him here and stop the clock. And they will get another possession. That's probably what they're looking to do for State. Mac Brown trying to get his team to a bowl game. They must win this game to be eligible. Then they're probably going to have to wait for the outcome of some games tomorrow before they find out if and where they're going. Now, North Carolina calls timeout with 108 remaining on the clock. It's third and nine for the Tar Heels. Well, they were doing some heavy, heavy strategizing and talking on the near sideline, Michael Kane and company, during that timeout. Because they're planning on stopping Carolina here on third and nine. But it'll be interesting to see what Carolina does, even if it is fourth down. But they've got three wideouts in the game, but they give it to Leon Johnson right up the middle. And Johnson's going to be short of the first down as he gets to about the 37. Jason Perry, who's made a lot of tackles today for NC State, Made the stop, and now State uses its final timeout to stop the clock with 102 remaining. It's going to bring up fourth down and about four yards to go for Carolina. Greg Addis running out there to receive the kick as Caparelli will try to put it out inside the 10. He bangs it, and it heads into the end zone. So State will have it at the 20 with 56 seconds left on the clock. A 37-yard punt, but only a net of 17 yards as they bring it out to the 20 against the Carolina front four that can come. They're coming now. Harvey gets it away. Incomplete. Grissett was over there in the pass well underthrown. Greg Ellis, number 87, had the most pressure on Harvey that time. 52 seconds now left on the clock. Second and 10. Marcus Jones and company up front for Carolina. They're going to rush Terry Harvey and you know try to disrupt his throwing pattern. That's what happened that time. Had good rush inside. It wasn't wasn't from Jones, but that front four from North Carolina, who's done a pretty good job today. Harvey has eluded a little bit of it. He's had a pretty good day passing. Three receivers to the left of the formation, and Harvey will roll that way. Firing it complete to Mike Guffey, who's out of bounds at about the 38 and a half. Fuzzy Lee had the coverage for Carolina. Now 46 seconds left, a gain of 19, and another state first down. Now remember, state has no more timeout, so they are going to try to run the ball, throw the ball to the perimeter of the field and get out of bounds to stop the clock. Or if they do get one in the middle of the field, they need to get a first down to at least it'll stop while they move the chains. Harvey now will roll the other way. And getting some pressure again. He comes back looking for somebody. Now he's going to have to run it. Get what he can and get out of bounds. And a flag goes down as Marcus Jones was rolling on the ground. And that, you know, to me, that's marginal right there. Well, he was Harvey blocked into Harvey. It, was, it wasn't the fact that he ran in and tried flag. to make a play out of bounds. You know, Marcus Jones is running and trying to make a play at the, at the, at the sideline. You'll see here Jones just follow him here throughout the play. 
you know, he's going to pursue, pursue, and Jones, uh, Harvey's going to come back to this side of the field, and Jones just being the, the tenacious defensive player that he is, watch him cover. He's going to get blocked right there, and then he goes and he hits Harvey. It's not a play out of bounds. Questionable call that time, but, but nonetheless, it's good for the Wolfpack. Yeah, he was pushed from behind by Carlos King. 15-yard penalty, first down. And was actually on the ground when Harvey ran over him and went down. Not that Marcus didn't reach out because he's obviously trying to make the tackle while he's being blocked. But the officials rule that he was hit out of bounds illegally, and that moves the ball down to the 34 of Carolina. 36 seconds remaining in the game. Plenty of time and, you know, right in striking distance here, they can throw the ball in the end zone a couple of times or, or try to stretch the field a little bit, move it down out of bounds and stop the clock. And a lot of opportunities here for, for the Wolfpack. Harvey trying to look back and look long, and now he dumps it off, and he had Grissett over there again coming back. But really, as was the case before, Harvey just trying to avoid the loss and stop the clock. Mike Pringley, 91, and Rick Terry, 94, were right in his face, and he did a good job to backpedal and avoid them. 30 seconds remaining in the game. Second and 10 from the Carolina 34. Harvey going over the middle of Guffey, incomplete. Guffey had a chance. Eric Thomas right there. And Mike could not hold on. 24 seconds on the clock. I think Mike saw the collision. It was about to come if he did catch the football. And Terry Harvey did string him out a little bit, but probably a pretty good pass and possibly one that Guffey may have caught. Should have been caught. Third and 10. An eight-point Carolina lead. Harvey has good protection, pumps it, steps up, now flips it incomplete. Carlos King was open, but Terry Harvey could not get the ball to him. 19 seconds left. Steve, important on that third down play. Hey, I got to think first down. And now they're running out of opportunities here. Harvey actually could have run forward, probably for at least a first down. And to move the chains and stop the clock until they get set up again. NC State has no timeouts remaining. And now it is fourth and ten. I think he originally may have thought about that, and then he saw Carlos King and changed his mind in midstream. That's what it appeared to be, however. This may be it for State. Fourth and ten. Harvey fires it for Guffey. He has the first down, and he's out of bounds inside the 15. Down by eight. Steve, I think they got to take two shots here at the end zone. Only got 13 seconds left. Got a couple of plays here, a couple of opportunities to make a touchdown. Four seconds on the game or the play clock. They just do get it off. Harvey. Into the end zone, Grissett, touchdown! Well, if there's ever been an important extra point, conversion opportunity for two, this is it for North Carolina. If North Carolina does not stop State going into the end zone, their bowl hopes are over, folks. They have to get six wins. And I tell you, this Wolfpack offense has shown no quit. Everybody on the sideline here for the Wolfpack is up and going. They're excited. Here's the play at the end. Nice pass that time by Harvey to the outside to Grissett, who is open in the corner. I don't know how Carolina can let those guys get that open, Steve. Well, that was a perfect throw right to the outside shoulder, and Grissett called it in for the touchdown. And, boy, are you right, Gary. This two-point conversion far more important to Carolina than it is to NC State. But NC State wants to tie the game if they can. Harvey into the end zone, almost intercepted. Do we have a flag? State wants a flag as one of the receivers was knocked down, Mike Guffey. And the pass was almost intercepted. It was knocked down by Carolina in the end zone. 
and the NC State fans as well as Michael Kane are livid. And I think Michael Kane has a justified beef. There was interference in the end zone. The referee was screened. He was all the way over to the corner, and there was the inside receiver that got knocked off and knocked down, and he did not have vision on that play. Steve here for the next, oh, 10, 12 months. That replay is going to be shown and shown and shown as we get set up here for the onside kick. Mark Permonte going to try it again. It's up in the air, but this time hauled in by Octavius Barnes. One second goes off the clock. NC State, no timeouts remaining, and Carolina now with the football and a two-point lead. And it looks like the Tar Heels are going to have a chance for a bowl bid. I'm sure uh, Mac Brown is not happy with how his defense did not really respond here late in the ball game. But Mike O'Kane, he's got to like what he's seen with his offense and uh, the way they have the resolve to come back and play well. And that's, that's what they're going to build on here for the future of North Carolina State. NC State went to a bowl last year, but not this year. And now Thomas will take a knee. State cannot stop it, and time runs out. As we expected, a tight ball game. It's too bad it had to end controversially, but Mac Brown and North Carolina probably headed for a bowl game with a two-point win today.